we're never going to replicate this. That's what happens when you demolish buildings that have history. I can bring the artwork, but it's still not going to be the brick that kids have run their hands on and people have spilled the hot sauce all over and they're like trying to wipe it off before the server sees it. The windows, the chandeliers, the beams that everyone thinks are about to cave in, they're actually hollow. <laughs> you can't replicate that anywhere. LaRue's, we are open till 8 o'clock. Is this hot, Mikey? Yeah. LaRue's was started in 1922 by the LaRue's family. Tony LaRue was a banker. Uh, Elisa was his wife and can make some mean tamales. And uh, they started in, down on 4th Avenue. And then in 1939, he bought the piece of property where we're at now and built it. And we've been open since 41. Hopefully selling the same great food. Tamales have always been the uh, mainstay of LaRue's, you know, Christmas time and Easter and just because you like them. We've known for our green corn tamales. Our beef are good. I, I like them a little spicier, but we can't kill the masses <laughs> with, with spice. LaRue's came into our family in 1961. My dad was an attorney. And I remember I was six years old at, at the dinner table and my mom announced to my father that she had bought LaRue's from Uncle Tony LaRue. He would, we're not related, but officially, but everyone was related back then. And all I remember as a six-year-old child is, you did what? <laughs> and so. She bought this place out of the fact that she was bored at home. I mean, she was a chemist from the U of A, and then she just decided to be a house mom for a little bit. And she bought it when she was like, okay, I'm not gonna stay in this home anymore. I remember I came here for the first time and I was afraid to touch anything because I didn't know what ownership meant. <laughs> I didn't know that it was ours and I was working here for the rest of my life. All my dad's friends from high school would come in and be like, hey, Miss Holquist, can I sweep the floor for a burrito? And she was very, open-hearted with people at her business, so she kind of made it easy for people to want to be here. She would cook at home Italian food because my great-grandfather was from Italy. So like a lot of the food here has like influences from an Italian heritage, but also her side of the family was from Wyma, so it's like you got a lot of the Sonoran flair. That's why when people are like, it's different, I'm like, well, the roots started differently. The food wasn't, we're gonna make it how everybody else does it. It's like, we're gonna make it like we do at home. I tried not to be in the family business, but I got sucked back in and I was trying to be a pro golfer and didn't, didn't do very well, but I had the best year of my life. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. But my parents started becoming ill and this is a hard business on your health. So I, I jumped in and was working more, and from about 21 on, I've been running LaRue's. Here, it's like grandma's home. You come in and you respect the ladies, and they'd show you how to make tamales. And I knew I had a passion for food, but I never knew how much until I started spending more time here. My son, Mike, started working and he started cooking a little bit, but he decided he wanted to go to culinary art school and he did really well. One's doing machaca, one's doing barbacoa, here we go. Running restaurants in San Diego and working for different chefs in San Diego had no light. You learn a lot, but there's so many egos and there's so many of me's trying to get a job to just work a line. I came back here because one, it's my dad and family, but two, it was a blank slate. My side of the business is making sure that the lights are on and everything, everyone gets paid and pay my taxes and pay everything else and keep it going. And this side is cooking, prep and prepare. And he's had some pretty wild dishes come out that were just absolutely famous. All the sauces are amazing. And we make everything here. France and Italy and from Mexico. 
Rita Reyes has been with us since 71. She was a young girl and she buys all the corn. She's been with us 47 years. And Rosie's been with us 26 years. And uh, if you take them all and add them up, I have a 26 year term of employment average. And uh, the only thing I could say is that we take good care of them and they take good care of us. How about um, machaca with uh Avocado, or do you want to do carne seca? Most of my customers are also my friends. They all know where to find me. Carne seca is awesome. Let's go with the carne seca. Have a I had a gentleman had not been in Tucson for 35 years. Big guy came in the door. This is about a year ago. He comes in, sits in the corner. I go, I know you. And he goes, No, you don't. I go, Yeah, I remember you. You get two bean and cheese burros and an horchata every time. He goes, Make it three. I haven't been here in 35 years. I heard about Broadway widening in 1983. Driven across town on Broadway lately? Did you find the experience frustrating? You're not alone. That's why the city's transportation... I bought the, uh, the little house next down. door, and I was told there was going to be some road widening. But I bought it anyway, knowing that we needed the space and the parking, and we were getting busier and busier. Well, 1987 came by, and they announced that they were going to knock us down, widen the road big to do and nothing happened. More talk started happening in 97 and then nothing happened. 2007 came, big to do, nothing happened. 2017 things did finally start happening so it was 35 years of hope and hurry and wait and now we have closure. Well they say they want to demolish it you know June 1st. Part of me wants to get a keg with all my customers and sit across the street and just have a great old time. My staff wants to shackle their bodies to the building. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at it and swallow it. It's gonna be part of my past. My analogy is that they're paying us for our used car. Understandably, we've been here a long time. But I have to go buy a new car. And you're making me go buy a new car, or unless I go out of business. I just thought Broadway property in the city of Tucson would be worth more than what they paid me. So now it's time for me to say, okay, well, what makes sense for the business? What makes sense for me? You know, I want my dad to retire, you know, but even though if I say, dad, I'll give you money to retire, he'd probably still show up and sweep and bus tables and talk to customers, that's just who he is. In the last two weeks, I've seen more emotions from my customers, people just crying. This building means a lot to them. So, I mean, I've got people like, my car just automatically drives to you guys. I mean, that's pretty funny. I mean, you know, not bad for 97 years old, little 15 table taco shop that sells, you know, lobster tacos when the lobster's cheap enough to get it. We shine in our own light. I don't know what's next. There's a lot of people who are freaking out that we're not gonna do something. But it's easier to say we don't have anything lined up or we may not reopen. Because when I do reopen, if I reopen, it's gonna spark another frenzy.